My name is Casey Pfeiffer. I am a registered professional structural engineer in San Diego, California. I have a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering at the University of Notre Dame. I have been practicing engineering for 15 years and currently I am the principal of Pacific Coast Structural Engineering in San Diego, California. As a structural engineer, we specialize in the design of hospitals, industrial buildings, and commercial office in structural steel and concrete. When I saw the second plane hit uh, the second tower, I was shocked. But I had a lot of work to do, so I went straight to work and I got to work and just continued working throughout the day. Um, about part way through the day, uh, I was told that the buildings collapsed, that the towers collapsed. And I didn't really give too much thought to it because it just didn't make any sense to me. I thought maybe that the buildings uh, had a partial collapse or just folded over or something along those lines. And then whenever I went home, I was amazed and shocked that they actually collapsed, that they collapsed all the way down uh, in, in, uh, in the fashion that they did. And I couldn't, I couldn't put it together in my head as to how this could have happened. Um, and even af days after, weeks after, people uh, that are not familiar with structural engineering would ask me, and I had a hard time giving them any kind of real explanation because I didn't know a lot of what's going on. And a friend of mine gave me a Blueprint for 9-11 Truth DVD to review and from that, the evidence that I saw was so compelling that I, it became obvious that the official story was not correct. Upon further review of the videos of the tower's destruction um, in the 9-11 Blueprint for Truth DVD, I was surprised to see the upper floors of the North Tower, the upper 15 floors of the North Tower implode prior to any destruction of the tower below because it would be logical that as a result of the plane crash that the, the upper 15 floors would start to damage the floors below, not the floors above. It's not rational to think that the floors above would start imploding prior to starting to affect the lower floors. And we're told by NIST that the upper 15 stories uh, drove the destruction of the lower towers, but yet within the first four seconds, the upper 15 floors appeared to implode and disappear prior to any damage to the lower portion of the tower. In reviewing the South Tower and uh, watching the upper 30 stories tilt to approximately 22 degrees, uh, you're surprised that the tilting stops. The tilting is actually arrested. Um, according to Newton's law of physics, a body that goes in motion will stay in motion unless it's interrupted by another force. Um, so it's fairly obvious that those upper floors, as they were tilting, uh, they, they're motion was interrupted by what appears to be a series of explosions um, before it and those upper floors uh, similar to tower the north tower they implode pr prior to the destruction of the lower portion of the tower and it's logical in my mind that those upper floors uh, would, could separate from the top of the tower and fall as one single piece down to the ground and uh, you would see that full mass of the building. Although mangled, you would still see it on the ground. And as a structural engineer, it doesn't make any sense to me that the, the buildings could have collapsed the way they did uh, without any secondary explosions. Um, beyond just the explosions that occurred as a result of the plane collision. Uh, one of the curious things about the entire day was the collapse of Building 7, which were not, was not hit by a plane of any sort. 
The collapse of Building 7 was something that we did not hear about on the news media, especially if you weren't watching every hour and every minute. There was reports of the Building 7 collapse, but after that first day, you weren't really exposed to anything about what happened to that building. And, but whenever you look at the video, it comes down exactly like a controlled demolition of a building. Uh, and if you've seen one, you know it just it looks exactly like a controlled demolition. And and one of the things in looking at the NIST video, their um, their video of the a computer model that they put together to try to explain that the collapse of the 47 story tall building came down as a result of the collapse of a column, which um, initiated the collapse of the upper penthouse, and then progressively collapsed the building. Um, laterally across is a little bit hard to believe. In order for the Building 7 to collapse in the six seconds that it took uh, based on the video evidence, uh, there would have to be a failure of over 400 steel connections per second. If you were to look at a standard moment frame uh, steel connection, which is a welded connection between the beam and the column, it would take on the order of around 500,000 pounds to shear off one connection. And if you multiply that by 400, put maybe a safety factor of four, you would require 50 million pounds of force per second in order to collapse the building the way it was shown uh, based on the NIST report and what we saw on the video evidence of uh, the video of the building that day. It's highly unlikely, uh, don't know how that could ever happen uh, without uh, secondary explosions. Uh, it's, it's not logical or reasonable. In order for the steel connections, the isolated steel connections, to fail at the rate that they did um, progressively across the building, uh, even if a floor were to collapse, it still wouldn't be able to collapse all of the connections simultaneously at the rate that it did without secondary explosions. Based on the evidence available, through the help of the architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, I feel that we must demand a new investigation into the destruction of the World Trade Center towers and NIST itself. <laughs>